for some great Baltimore sports talk. Catch the Purple Pride Sports Show with host Bill West and producer Justin Ford. Saturday mornings from 9 to 11 and Monday evenings from 7 to 8 on Q, 1370 AM. Welcome back to Inside Press Box. On the second Thursday of every month, Press Box hosts a luncheon at Padonia Station, which features a prominent sports figure as guest speaker. Speaker talks for about 10 to 15 minutes, giving insight, telling stories. Then the audience has the opportunity to ask questions. Here's a look at some of this month's Q&A with OGM Dan Duquette. Hey, I wanted to ask you, you use the phrase to this crowd here, this is a veteran crowd. The game of baseball has, has three distinct sort of ages. You've got these young uh, nerds that know everything about the statistics of the game. They got guys your age who probably were a nerd about 25 years ago. And then you got the guys like Freddie Ferrero, Gary Rasich. Can you talk a little bit about the wisdom that some of these older guys have and how it might clash or mesh with some of the younger sabermetric people in the game of baseball? Okay, thank you, Stan. I, I, I don't think that's a real tough question, actually. I didn't either. <laughs> um, we have, uh, you know, you read a lot about the uh, sabermetrics, and you guys see the movie Moneyball? Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah, it was a great movie, wasn't it? Uh, Billy Bean's assistant, uh, he, he was funny. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. The, um, but the, the use of uh, advanced metrics to evaluate ballplayers, I mean, I always point to Earl Weaver as the godfather of uh, sabermetrics because Earl understood the value of on-base percentage. And I remember sitting in the stands in Milwaukee in 1980, and Earl would have uh, his guy on the radar gun up in the stands, and Earl wanted to know when his pitcher was getting tired, and he didn't want to know it from the hitters, right? <laughs> he, he didn't want to know it when the guy got a couple doubles off his guy. He wanted to know when his pitcher was losing velocity. So Earl used to have a, uh, I think it was Charlie Bree. He used to have him in the stands, and I'd sit next to him, and you know, Earl would want to know if his velocity was going up or going down. So the uh, education process of the sabermetrics really went mainstream when, when Moneyball was, was put out. I mean, it got into the, the, the culture, but you know, th these metrics, th they allow you to follow and know everything about these ballplayers. You can, you can, you can, they, they track every single baseball that's thrown or hit and uh, caught or not, and you know, the, the biggest um, advancement in evaluating players over the last 10 years is really in the defensive metrics allow you to, you know, see what kind of contribution the player makes to your ball club defensively. And if it's all about uh, pitching, if you have good defense, that makes all your pitchers better, of course. So we utilize uh, advanced metrics, but... If you put the advanced metrics and the young kids together with the veteran baseball guys like uh, Buck Showalter and uh, Freddie Ferreira, I think you have a very powerful combination because they each bring something distinct to your organization. So uh, at the winter meeting this past week, you could see the, the interplay between the uh, Sabre metrics and the veteran baseball people. You know, there are some baseball teams that are old school that don't use the Sabre metrics, and one of them is Atlanta, uh, led by John Sherholz, who's a terrific GM, and uh, I, I feel he's, you know, the best general manager I've ever seen. And he's an old school guy, and uh, his team is always in the playoffs. They were there again this year. So there's teams that do it old school. There's teams that do it uh, new school. I think we're... We use the metrics, but I, I, I have a lot of uh, confidence in, in the veteran baseball people. And I think together they, you know, they, they, they get it right. Before we open it up to questions out here, i got two people I want to ask you about. One used to work for the ball club. He was your predecessor, Andy McPhail. What kind of work do you think Andy did at getting this team ready? You don't hear his name mentioned that much 
right now, but I wonder what you think of the work he did for the four, four plus years he was here. And then Buck Showalter. It's often the general manager gets to hire his manager. You inherited an already a manager in position. Could you talk a little bit about those two, two situations? Well, you, you, you know, uh, I called Andy to thank him, and I invited him out to the playoffs, but he, Andy, um, I, you know, he wasn't comfortable coming out. But Andy, Andy's work on the team was evident during the year. I thought the, uh, that trade for uh, Jones and Tillman for uh, Eric Bedard, I mean, it took – I mean, that, that's a pretty good trade. And you got Cheryl for Steve Johnson afterwards. You got Cheryl in that trade, yeah. And, the, uh, and uh, Stevie Johnson did a great job. He, he came up during the season, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Tillman and Johnson and Gonzalez, I mean, those guys won 22 games after we uh, reconditioned the pitching staff. Um, but uh, it, it, that, that, that was a uh, terrific um, – trade for the team and uh, laid the groundwork uh, for, you know, this type of season by, by getting a core player. And, of course, Matt Wieters, uh, he was a top draft pick, and he, he got to the big leagues quickly. So, you know, a lot of the uh, core elements uh, Andy put into place. And, you know, one of the most attractive things about coming to work for the Orioles is to be able to uh, work with a real pro like Buck Showalter. And, uh, you know, uh, Buck and I share the same fundamentals about building a winning team. Uh, having Buck worked, of course, with George Steinbrenner with the Yankees, and and uh, frankly, I modeled our work in Boston after the Yankees because that's who we were trying to catch. So we had great admiration for them, and I, I always thought the best uh, college coach in the business was Ron Polk, who was Buck's coach at Mississippi State, and I used to go and listen to the college coaches at all the clinicians, and uh, I utilized a lot of Ron Polk's educational materials for the uh, player development manual I put together with the Expos. So, I mean, that, 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 that was, um, you know, that, that was just a real privilege for me to, uh, to work with uh, Buck. He's a real pro. And you can see more of Dan Duquette's talk right now at PressBoxOnline.com. And be sure to make your reservations now for January 2nd Thursday luncheon happening on January 10th. Guest speaker will be Towson University head football coach Rob Andros. And as always, we'll have a great lunch buffet featuring Roma sausages. Doors open at 11 a.m. Log on to PressBoxOnline.com for the complete details. We'll be right back to wrap things up after this. Inside Press Box is brought to you in part by Glen Burnie Transmission, your dealer alternative for transmission repairs. Save hundreds of dollars off dealer's prices. Financing and free towing are available. Call Mark at GBT today and ask for the Press Box special for more savings. 